Well, good afternoon, everyone. Well, today we are going to talk about sales digitalization. Okay. <laughs> um, well, before we start talking about sales digitalization and how to do it right and what are the common mistakes, and then we are going to talk a little bit about AI, how AI will impact the way we sell and what's going to happen in the future. First of all, uh, I would like to talk about the force manager briefly. It's going to be like an introduction of international context. Uh, what we are, a uh, force manager, we are a, a mobile application uh, and we help sales reps, uh, in case of insurance agents, also sales managers, to be more efficient while they are on the go. Right? Uh, we use the concept of personal sales assistant because we understand that technology should be helpful for them and should be acting like an assistant, not something that they have to use to report their activities only. Right? Something practical, something smart, and something useful. <coughs> right? So, going to the next slide, uh, this is about us. Uh, we have 700 uh, corporate clients. We are roughly 150 employees, and we work in different locations. Uh, we have offices in Spain. This is where we have our headquarters in Barcelona. I put two weeks to go, believe me. Sunny, perfect. <laughs> And we have an office in Madrid, of course, uh, UK, uh, Germany, Italy, uh, New York for Latin America, and uh, Mexico for Latin America, right? And, well, let's talk about sales, not about us. And let's start with some numbers, some facts. 40% of sales reps, they still using pen and pencil. And some cases, Excel spreadsheets, if we are lucky enough. Does it sound familiar to you? <laughs> it happens everywhere, right? There are some countries where it's even worse or it's a little bit better, but it used to be always the same case. Even in countries like North America, where everyone expects that these guys are going to be like at the edge of technology, and they are not really very digital when it comes to food sales. These guys are the last frontier on the digitalization stage. And there is a reason for this. It's because they have a different use case. They are out there, moving from one place to the other, it's very hot, and it's cold, and they have the sun and on the screen of their smartphones, they can barely see the information. So it's a different use case. And if you try to plan a global system in a different use case that is extremely, extremely, extremely mobile, then probably is not going to be used, right? And the second one, do you believe that they spend more than one hour a day reporting? It's crazy. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time that you're spending in a non-productive activity. And believe me, they hate reporting. At least the good ones. The good sales rep, the good one, always, always hate reporting. Always. If you find yourself with a sales rep that likes reporting, Fire him, because he's not going to sell, for sure. <laughs> and the adoption of, of serum in sales is less than 50%. When I mean adoption, it means I have a CRM, but no one is using it. You don't have a CRM, right? If you have a CRM, it's because everyone is using it. And it happens not very often. The typical scenario is that we have a fancy CRM, we spend millions of euros, and no one is using it. Or well, at least they use it Friday, afternoon, right? They enter all the information like crazy, you know, Friday afternoon, they, they try to enter the information about the basics they did on Monday, they don't remember, but they just put some information there. So the reliability of the information is really, really poor, right? Okay. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. I'm trying to be very physical, I don't know my phone, so. <laughs> Is the first time I do it. Okay, um, I like this picture because here we see the evolution of technology in the last 20 years. And what do you see here? What happened with the technology? It's getting smaller. smaller. But the most important thing is that it's getting closer. It's getting closer to the user, right? It's getting more natural because okay, this is not this is not good. Okay, for your for your back, it's not very natural. And, but this is more natural, you know? So the uh, technology 
like gets closer to the to the to the end user. So this way we can embed technology in their processes naturally. This is 90s. Uh, I used this kind of computers when I started uh, working, and well, uh, you see mobility is not really easy with these ones. Then we started with the first truly mobility systems like these ones. Uh, in it, I had this computer in particular, uh, and it was like a great time for Pfizer therapists because they. <laughs> <laughs> It was great because you remember that you were hanging, you know, in one shoulder, so you had to go to the five services, you know, to help you. And well, in this, in this one in particular, it was weighing, I think, like six kilograms on my feet, so crazy heavy. Then that's the beginning, the really beginning of the mobility. Uh, everyone talks and blames about BlackBerry, but BlackBerry did something incredible. They, everyone uh, talks about the iPhone. Things started with BlackBerry. Do you guys remember BlackBerry? <coughs> In, in, in 2008, 2007, it was incredible. Everyone was using BlackBerry, was using BlackBerry like crazy. And it was the moment when I really started working from my phone, right? So all the merit now is for Apple, but my belief is that the merit is for BlackBerry, that these guys are not here you know, to get the benefits. And BlackBerry started, and a lot of business processes uh, became embedded into the BlackBerry devices. But the reality is that the technology was not really there. Uh, there was a, there were a lot of problems with the connection, the synchronization, and, and all those things. When an implementation of a system is not the smooth, it sells things push the system back, and it's the perfect excuse for not selling. So if you are implementing a system like this to make it more productive, and it really is the excuse for being less productive, right? So it was not the best experiences. And some of the industries that were the early adopters of technology, like pharma, for instance, they implemented those systems and they spent a lot of money and sometimes it was not the best, uh, they didn't get the best results. Well, the good news is that the technology is here. Uh, I picked up randomly one application that is in the market, Force Manager. Uh, there are more applications, of course, okay? Uh, but was just to showcase you that the technology is there. Right now the technology is not a problem. We have the technology. We have the, the signal reliability. Okay? We have the devices that work very efficiently. Uh, they're really reliable. Uh, they're fast, snappy. So we have everything in place. So what's the problem for not starting the digitalization? So there are a lot of problems. And we're going to talk in the next slides about what are the things that we have to take care about when we digitalize our, our company. Um, guess what? The most important is not technology. Most important is people, okay? I'm a technical guy, and we are running a technical company, so it's very strong that I'm saying that the most important thing is not technology. Indeed, it's the less important thing. The most important thing is change the behavior of the people, helping them to change their routines and to jump into the technology age. So this is the most important thing. So my question here is, do you guys think that implementing technology, if we do it the right way, as I was mentioning before, it's gonna have an impact on sales? Okay, before you, you answer, some facts. 51% of successful, successful CRM implementations it means that have been done the right way, as so we will see in the next slides, have a direct impact in sales. 61% of sellers that were asked <clears throat> if they were increasing their productivity with mobility, they say that yes, we increase our productivity. It's obvious. All of us are using our smartphones, we're sending emails, so we are much more productive than before. That's <coughs> something very, very obvious. But the last one, it's very interesting because 26% of sales reps that has been asked if now they sell more than before, before implementing mobility, they agree that now they can sell more. Sales reps were the one answering this question. So the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Sales digitalization, it really increases sales, but it does increase sales when it's done the right way. Because it's done the, the wrong way, 
it can even not increase sales, it can decrease sales because if you can have the whole system disaligned and spending time on things that they are, they, they are not supposed to spend time, right? So, first of all, we should be aware from where we are starting, our starting point. And this is the typical thing. When we are designing a system, a digital system for our sales team, sometimes we are thinking about these guys, okay? Really fancy guys, millennials, uh, with, the, with the MacBook Air, uh, white teeth, you know? But when you, <laughs> when you see at your sales team, most of the times you don't see these guys, right? Most of the times you see this guy, <laughs> okay? And guess what? Who do you think is selling more? This guy or the nice guys? Nice guys. No. <laughs> this one is the one that used to sell more. Because this guy has the experience, knows the customers, is the one that used to be more, more savvy. And most of the times what we see is that we designed the system for these guys, but the ones that are driving the big part of the business are these ones. So we need to design a system for the guys. Okay, this is a, a crazy example, okay? Yeah. But and we have to think that we need to prepare the system for everyone, not only for the super, super, you know, technological sure. guys, right? So I remember when I was uh, 10 years before, 10 years younger, I didn't understand, you know, when I was, I was seeing a typical guy, you know, with the huge letters in their smartphone, but now I started to understand, okay? <laughs> so I am on the way. So. It's a cultural shift for everyone, for the good ones, the bad ones. And we need, we, we need to make sure that it's gonna be used by everyone. What do you see here? Nothing. It's impossible. This is a typical example, and it's a real one, of putting all the information in a tiny screen. This is the typical temptation that we have when we start a digitalization process. Um, it's not this exactly this screen, but uh, we had an issue with one, one of our biggest customers because uh, they got an assessment from, from a big uh, board, one of the biggest companies uh, in consultancy. And well, they were obsessed of uh, making their sales reps more consultant, so being more professional, so they need to have more information to be ready to the bid, to have the visit with, the, with all the information in place and so on. So they designed a system like this one that was offering them like crazy amount of information to prepare the visits, you know, like extremely well. They spent a huge amount of money designing this and we had to implement it. And I remember uh, I was talking with the guy, the project manager of the consultancy company, said, okay, that, that's very complicated. Uh, I don't even, I, I'm an engineer, so I, I, I had a lot of problems to understand how the system was working. But no, 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 they, they, will, they, they, will, they will know how to use it. Well, in six months, they were a sales team of 150 people, only eight people were using it. And my question is, do you think these eight guys were the guys that were selling the most or the less? Yes. These guys were selling the ones that were selling the less. So you spend a lot of money for keeping the guys that are selling the less entertained. <coughs> you know what I mean? So these guys should be selling, not playing with the, with the machine, you know? So this is one of the things that we need to to bear in mind all the time. Access of information is a failure. If I ask you right now, what are the three most important things, only three important things that one of your agents should have top of mind before getting into a meeting with a customer, probably you're gonna struggle. If I tell you, okay, not three, 10, it's gonna be much easier for you. So less is more. We have to be more strategic when we prioritize information. We need to make things digestible for someone that is moving from one place to another. Someone in, mo in mobility that is interacting with lots of customers. So trying to simplify things is extremely important. This is called the excess of information. We have to avoid this. And the result is simplicity. Simplicity is always a good thing. Even in life, everything. Things that can be explained in a simple way are better than things that can be explained in a very complex way, right? So simplicity, it means that they're gonna use it. It's gonna, it's gonna be easier for them to be trained. The, the learning curve is gonna be 
and faster. Simplicity is good, right? But it's really hard. Less is more immobility. And less, trying to make things condensated and meaningful, it's very complicated. And then, common sense. Get the ones that are going to use it involved into the project. <coughs> Get the sales team involved. This is paramount. Because if they're not involved in the design of the system, somehow they're going to push it back. We need to make them owners of the system. If they feel that they're owning the system, they're going to work you, they're going to help you to, to implement the system in the, in the overall team. And how does it work? Well, uh, it usually works uh, creating focus groups of users that are the ones that are helping you in that in the initial stage of the project, uh, testing the application, uh, providing feedback, and sometimes the feedback is not good, but let's try to implement some stuff that they're, in, that they're, uh, they're saying because we want them to be involved into the system and, and become owners. And when you try to implement the system in the rest of the company, these guys are gonna help you because these guys are gonna be the champions. As I said before, it's common sense. This is not like rocket science. It's going back to the basics. And this is a common mistake. Okay, this is the Big Bang. Okay, the Big Bang, it was like uh, the biggest explosion ever uh, in the universe. It was like a explosion that was like billions of years of temperature. Well, you don't want to have this in your company, right? I guess. And most of the times I see because, okay, uh, the time, the deadline is, uh, it's, 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 it's around the corner, uh, we need to rush, uh, and we want to implement everything at the same time. We don't do it, it never works. It's always the same problem. We need to do things slowly. So we need to plan them carefully, and we need to do it slowly, step by step. First of all, let's put one functionality, very simple. They start using this functionality, then let's add another, then another, and another. So this way, they are getting into the rhythm of implementing a, a digital transformation because digital transformation is habit transformation and habits are very complicated to change, right? Even for sales reps that they've been selling for all their life and most of them they're successful, the good ones are successful. So they say, okay, what do I have to change? If, I, if I'm really good, it works, what I do works. So you need to be very, very careful. Avoid big bands. Big bands are the worst thing ever. Uh, in transformation. And well, training. Okay, the project is very expensive. Let's scratch some dollars on the training. We can do it by ourselves. A really good training. A really good speaking publicly, you know. Okay, don't do it. Don't save money on training. And uh, use professionals. <laughs> this is a typical mistake because uh, you spend a lot of money in a project, a lot of resources, but the most critical part that is making users use it and implement it and embed it in their daily processes, if you are using amateurs, not professionals. So I would say, I would encourage, spend money on training because it's the most critical part of one of these uh, projects. And do it not one time, two times, three times, four times. On my own experience, you need to tell to one rep eight times the same thing to make the guy do things, you know? So this is what I learned managing people. <laughs> you need to repeat things, repeat things, repeat things, and then things happen, okay? Okay, you guys send an email. Hey, guys, you have to do this. It's work. Never. You have to send an email, then tell them in person, then tell them again, so. And training should be something that should be done a lot of times, right? And this is a typical mistake. Oh, well, always, Put the user in the center. We learned that from, from Apple. Apple is one of our strategic partners, and the iOS application, uh, we developed uh, the application with them in Cupertino. And, and, and it's a privilege for us because uh, we can see these guys in action, which is amazing, by the way, to see how these guys design applications. Uh, we've learned a lot of stuff from them. And they always repeat the same things, like a mantra. User is the first. User in the middle, always, always. If the user is not going to use it, it's not going to work. It's going to be a waste of time because of, but in the end, the fake users, the ones that are not selling, are the ones that are going to be entering the information and it's not going to work for you. So it's always the same, user in the middle. 
And it's quite really related to the to the first slide when we were seeing, you know, the very crowded, you know, mobile screen with a lot of icons and a lot of information. Uh, I remember uh, one time when, uh, when when I was in Cupertino in the lab team with Apple, uh, that we were uh, we were designing uh, one 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 screen of the application, and I remember uh, that one guy from from Apple this open door and closed door. I was like, what's this guy doing? And then he came with a notebook full of notes on what changes we had to do in the application. And I said, what, what, what are you guys doing? No, it's very simple. Uh, <coughs> if in two seconds we don't get a clear idea of the main structure of the application, it's going to be very difficult for <coughs> the trying users because it's not natural. So you need to get like, OK, you more or less know the structure and you know how to use it. So this is another example because when you are on the go, you have a very, very limited amount of time that you can focus your 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 attention into the mobile screen because you are in the middle of, of the street, you know, with people moving around. So you have you're multitasking. So you have a very, very tiny amount of time, you know, to, to, to get things, you know, to get information. So you need to prepare everything carefully for someone that is gonna look to the, to the information in, in three, four, five seconds, right? It's not the same thing that when you are in, in front of a computer with your headphones, you know, concentrated, right? So always have the user in, in top of mind. If the user is moving around, if it's outside, uh, if he's in the car, think about what this guy is doing and put him in her shoes, right? I like a lot this, this, this sentence. If you're thinking about something else than selling more, probably you are not really focusing on the most important thing. Because to be honest, everyone is here and everyone is in business to increase sales or at least sell better with better margins and so on. So we need to focus on the main objective. If, and if we are in sales, everything should be designed for selling more. Of course, that we are making our reps more more consultative because we want to provide a better service to our customers. But what's the end purpose? Sell more, right? So uh, keep this in mind when you are designing the system because the final objective is the final objective, right? So make always the connection with the final objective. Well, this is, okay, this is like this here because everyone is asking me always the same thing. Okay, we have a lot of tablets, uh, we have a smartphone, what's the, what's the best option? Tablet, smartphone. Um, well, it has changed a little bit over the years. Uh, three years ago, uh, everyone was buying tablets. Now I see the tendency of the trend is more on buying smartphones. But um, we wanted to test it to understand what's the, the pattern behind this and, and what does the user prefer, again, user century. And we did uh, well, a video test with one of our clients. Uh, they provide uh, uh, iPads in this case and, and and iPhones uh, to the sales reps. I say, okay, use whatever you want, whenever you want. You are uh, you are free, right? It's your call. And after a month, we saw that eighty six percent of the data entry, the data entered into the system, was entered from the smartphone, and fourteen percent was entered through the tablet. And the going deeper into the analysis, we saw that smartphone is being used off time while they are moving on the execution. And the tablet is being used when they are at rest, when they are having breakfast, when they are having lunch, uh, at the night when they are at home. So it's part of planning, and the phone is more for execution. So I would say the same. If you have a highly uh, driven, execution driven uh, sales team, I would rather go for smart phones. And if they need to plan, or maybe they need to show presentations, or they need the, the customers to sign something, I guess, specific use cases then the tablet is a good option. But for execution, the best options, for sure, is smartphone, because it's more natural for them. Do you remember the, the guy with the smartphone that gets you know, closer to the user? This is the case. If they have it on their smartphone, it's where they have their WhatsApp, when they have, where they have their phone, uh, it's the main tool for a subscriber. It's common sense, right? And the combination of the two is the more powerful, of course. Well, let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. What's going to happen with the with, with sales? Because everyone is talking about AI, that it's going to change the world, everything is going to change. But how is it going to change? It's going to change for better, for worse. <laughs> what's, what's going to happen for, for, for the sales teams? 
Well, the first thing I, I perceive is that systems are going to become more assistance for, for, for the users. So it's a matter of making them more smart, not replacing the user. It's just making the user smarter. And it means recommendations. And not recommendations uh, just there, because I remember I was I was talking with an insurance company uh, 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 last month, and they have implemented a recommendation system for the agents, uh, and the recommendation system was on a website, and no one was using it. They were not entering into the system. You need to show the recommendation in the right time when they need it, because we have millions of things in, in our heads. When we are stepping into a meeting, then we need to see the recommendation of what we have to talk about with this guy in two minutes, right? This is when you retain the information, when you have the information in the right time, right? This is what we call smart recommendations and contextual recommendations. So everything should be contextual. Well, I'm, I'm gonna show you how it looks like. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Okay, it works. So now I'm, I'm the user reporting a visit, okay? It looks very fast, but basically the important thing is this, okay? I enter the information with my voice. Everything went well. We agreed to sign a contract next Monday. Well, it, it doesn't sound very natural, but, but you can do it with natural words, okay? But we wanted to make sure that it was recognized. Did you see that? In, okay, I'm gonna, I don't know if I can go back today. Okay, the thing here, what happened here is that I reported the, the activity with my boys. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the contract next Monday. And when I sent the activity, the system popped up a, a small screen here that said, hey, I have detected that you wanted to create an activity. Do you want me to help you to create an activity? So trying to understand and to predict what the user wants to do, just basically, basically seeing it being, being intelligent. If I were an assistant, I would be suggesting you, okay, let's create the activity. So understanding the words, the natural language, and trying to predict what you want to do and help you with this. Not rocket science, but in this case here, there's a lot of technology behind it. And conversation. As you can imagine, the most natural thing to do for a soldier is talking, right? We feel very comfortable talking because it's the most common thing that we do all the time, right? So making the things conversational makes a lot of sense when it comes to sales. Because they feel really, really relaxed and, and, and they really think that the, the system is, is for them, right? So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples in the next slide, but first of all, I would like to 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 brainstorm a little bit on, on the use case of this. When do you think that sales reps me? Uh, can talk but cannot do anything else. When you're driving, this thing crazy amount of time driving. It's a waste time. Uh, we 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 run a study with, with IBM for uh, for the American market, and we saw that there were like 500 million hours per year spent by sales reps driving. It's incredible. It's a lot of time. Which it's, market is it? What? Which market is it? The US. This is US, on the US. The traffic is okay. Yeah. Yes, well, big distances, they have to drive a lot. But for instance, in, in, in Spain, uh, I think it's gonna be more or less, because commuting, you spend maybe one hour and a half every day. And probably uh, moving from customers, you spend like two hours. So being face to face with customers, uh, you're gonna be like six hours. So you spend a lot of time driving, a lot. If you talk with, with your sales guys, uh, they're gonna tell you. That's the best way to get this information, because it will be on this line. In countries like Mexico, for instance, it's even higher. It's like crazy. Maybe it's like half of the of, of the day driving because uh, the, the traffic is horrible. Believe me. And I've been in Mexico. We have an office in Mexico. We go there a lot. And by the way, yeah, integration is it's very important. Uh, and our system in this case can be a standalone system, uh, but when it comes to the cooperation, we need to integrate it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the times we work with the integrator that is already there, that they know the systems and so on, uh, and then we, we do the connections. Everything is prepared to be always integrated with those systems <coughs> because uh, you need to have this information in place to, to help the ones that are in the field to have uh, 
takes one more than it. And it can be a combination of different yeah, inputs, yeah. right? So one is the information, the analytics yeah. that you have. If it's a follow-up meeting, it could be something that you fed back, so you you uh, yeah, absolutely. Data, that, that's the thing. If you combine past activity, sales activity into the into the equation, then you can have powerful recommendations. That's that's the most important thing about recording an activity, because most of the times we forget about recording the activity because activity is not sales, it's not business. It's before business, but if you have the activity, then you can mix everything in the, in the equation and have a really smart recommendations. My question is in two parts. So basically, the data that is provided here to the assistant is coming from the system, and then we also have to record the activity. So basically, the sales guys today hate to you know enter the uh, activity so that instead of doing it on the paper, they do it on the system. Mm -hmm. That is one. And what happens to security? Because a lot of uh, organizations who want to integrate this may have a privacy client information. What happens to that? Well, security is a matter that it's always important for, for insurance. Uh, in security, uh, okay, we can we can get deeper into security later on, but uh, we are compliant to to the, the security standards because we work for insurance, we work for banking, so we are very used to the typical security things, and we have different levels of security. Uh, for instance, we can even create uh, private clouds for for customers, but of course, uh, as we get uh, deeper and deeper and, and, and a more robust and secure system, it of course gets more expensive, right? So of course it's something that uh, it's it's always in this kind of projects. Okay, so now let's see another uh, use case about entering information because now we were consuming information. Now let's see how we can enter information to the system and let's see how natural it looks like, right? Hi Lana, I would like to check in. Choosing which result you want to check in. The first one. Which type of activity do you want this check-in to be? It's a follow-up visit. These were the activities that are into the system, right? They were set up. Perfect. Do you want to add a comment too? Yes. Great. Just give me a second to grab pen and paper. <laughs> I've been talking to James, and we are going to talk about the new insurance policy and we are going to close an agreement to sell to the... I was very lying, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> ...of auto. Just to be sure, do you want me to create a check-in of type follow-up visit in case Parsons do buy? Yes, please. Check-in created. Well, there are some mandatory fields left to fill. You should take care of them later. Do you need something of the account Hayes Parsons to buy? Well, this is a way to enter information to the system. I feel that it's uh, quite natural. And the important thing here is, is to make this system as natural as possible. For instance, now we are changing the voice uh, because we saw this voice was a little like, uh, like machine like. And we used another one uh, that is being developed by Google. It's like really, really good. And it changed a lot the perception of the, of the user. So these things are really important when you are trying to, to make them trust into the system. And well, um, we, we, we record all the things that we are asking to the system uh, to make the system smarter. But sometimes when we are in the car alone, they, they say like crazy things to the system. So uh, we need to control it a bit, you know, to make the system not, not learn bad things, you know. <laughs> And this is, this is something that happened to Microsoft before. And you have to understand that these guys are guys that are in sales, they are driving with their car, you know, the loneliness of the car, you know. And so, so we, we, we have to work this around, you know. And it happened to, no, this is, this is one, of the, one of the things that we need to care, you have to take care of when you design these kind of systems. Uh, it happened to Microsoft. Uh, they released a bot in, in Twitter uh, three weeks ago that was based on AI, I was learning from the interactions with the rest of Twitter users. So finally, uh, the, 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 the bot became like a racist, a, a sexist, everything, all the worst things in the world, you know? Because everyone like, ah, was yelling to the system, you know, was, was playing around. So um, you have to put systems in place, and I'm not kidding, that, that's reality. You have, to, you have to put systems in place to protect the, the, the AI, uh, because it's like a child, it's learning, you know, so you need to put some, some protections. 
Okay, this is the last example. Okay, it's, it's about uh, review, reviewing your Python. It's another example of, of getting information just to show you another use case, right? This is your pipeline for the next one. The weighted value of the two best is 980 euros. The first one life insurance Smith has a value of 1.500 euros. Home insurance with 800 euros. Do you want more information about them? Yes, about the first one. The opportunity life insurance Smith has charged this point, okay, sorry, okay, I don't want to repeat it. It's not going to happen, okay, not yet. One thing that is important here is uh, that the system should understand the context and should keep the context, uh, because what happens with Siri, for instance, is that you talk to Siri, and it's like uh, you're starting from scratch every time you talk with Siri, you know, it doesn't re retain anything. So if you're talking about, uh, if you're showing a list of opportunities, uh, and if I want to I want to talk about the first one, things like this. So the system should be intelligent enough to, to understand that you are talking about something in particular, right? And, and then you say, okay, show me the quotes uh, that have been done. Uh, you have to say, I have you done to this opportunity in particular. So let's make the system a little bit more smarter. So this is one of the things that we learned that and we have to implement because otherwise the system was like very blanky to use. So let's jump to the to the future, okay? And. <clears throat> Some people think that AI is going to be this, okay? The, I like a lot this movie, uh, but it's very, it's very creepy, a little bit scary, okay? And I believe it's not, it's not, it's not going to be the case, okay? at least in sales. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, AI should be an enabled system to sales not replacing sales uh, I was in a panel uh, a few weeks ago in London, and they were talk there was one guy, one crazy guy, that was talking about uh, robotization of sales, you know, something like this. Like, come on, man, it's not going to happen, you know. And, and at least in, in industries where trust is the most important thing, right? Uh, you need to talk with someone. Uh, if you don't play with these things, uh, it's not going to work, right? Of course, you can implement systems that are really automated, and you don't have to go to AI. You can do it with, with the actual technologies, web-based technologies and so on. If there is a transactional sale, if there is no value in the sales and it can be transactional, you can make it everything automatic and online. But if it's a sales process that needs to have the human touch, uh, trust, and, and connection, uh, you need to have sales reps for sure. But if you can have these sales reps more prepared, then things work. And they're trying to resume everything. For me, AI, is for making interactions more human, not to replace humans. That's that's the main thing, right? Well, thank you so much. If you have any question or whatever, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be around. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.